65 of the Movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the fog of film. My name is James. Oh, I'm Wyndham. And as yet, Laurie is lost in the tunnels of the internet. Oh no. Like, the, um, what was it? The Time Tunnel. Was it the Time Tunnel? I don't know. That 60s show with the circular thing. Uh, it was on. So it sounds familiar, but I cannot picture it. it I oh, think yeah, it was made yeah, by yeah. The, the same people as Planet of the Giants. Oh, and, um, right. And, you know, lost in space. It had that yeah. kind of look. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at some of... Ah, oh, okay. Oh, look at that. Might have to go and watch some of that. <laughs> I wouldn't say what's very good. <laughs> Talking of... Uh, this TV show while we went flying. Um, I watched the first episode of the new Quantum Leap. Oh yeah. Well, and... well, uh, I wasn't hugely impressed. I mean, they've they've got a whole team around the Sam, you know, as opposed to just Ziggy and. Yeah, Al. well, Ziggy, yeah, because never Ziggy was just a computer. Ziggy's yeah. more we, you know, he's AI obviously and. Um, he hadn't we hadn't seen him do it it was just a computer at the time so who mm. knows but then we've got you've got like professors and people and generals and stuff and oh. you know and i can't help but thinking they're gonna have to give them something to do every week yeah when when obviously the sam is back in time and, and does the sam have a catchphrase oh my god i'm, I'm watching some trailers for it it's a bit jazz hands isn't it well yeah yeah it's very pc as well i suppose which is fine but it, 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 to be honest, the PC aspect didn't bother me. It was just the quality of the characters seemed all a mm. bit weak. Yeah. No, he didn't say oh boy, and I think he was about to say oh fuck before you know they cut it off. <laughs> um, but it, you know they usually establish those in the second episode, I think. And uh, presumably he would, he would know that that's what's going to happen. Well. Because it's 30 he, years after, well, right? Th- yeah, they re- they've really opened the Quantum Leap um, thing, the experiment, mm. whatever, and they're looking for Sam Beckett, who was lost. Oh, no. Well, he wasn't lost. He ended up in hell. We all know that, because I remember the last episode. Do you remember that one? No. no. Yeah, and Sam um, Sam wasn't um, Sam, who was the devil. Not all the time, just in that episode, I think. Anyway, mm. he the actor who plays him was dead, so they had a nice picture he of is, him. Yeah. Um, and I imagine at some point they're going to bump into Sam Beckett. Scott's going to be around, is he? Yeah, well, I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, we we'll, we'll better crack on because time's of the essence today. Um, hmm. Luckily, we haven't had any mail. So. <laughs> Move straight Thank on to, God for that. to the news. Now it's been a while again. We've been aiming to record for a while, but um, it's not been that long for for the listener. But we wanted to do a squeeze one anyway. But hmm. time got away from us. Um, have you got anything you want to bring up news wise? No, no, me neither. We're going to zoom through this. Yeah, we really haven't been on the ball. I, I feel like I haven't been on the ball for this one. Well, which, which given my normal level is a really bad sign. I think if those previous ones are me on the ball, shit. I think I, I think also there didn't seem to be a hell of a lot of news, and I, and the reason for that I imagine has been in the writers' right, strike, right. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody's been publicising anything or talking about anything, so mm. so they haven't been talking about what's coming up, maybe. Um, so that's my excuse. <laughs> or... Scotty, beat me up. <laughs> Surprise. Right, so nice. let's let's crack on within the B. Um, okay. So, when do you want to go first? I, you know, I don't have. I was thinking about this. I don't have a film <laughs> I've seen that is good. Right. I've well, seen, that's fair enough. I've seen a couple of really shit films. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, I, I don't have anything to shine a light on. Okay. Well, I'm, this time. I'm going to be shining a light um, to a film called The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Have you seen it? I have not. I have heard of it. Yeah, um, um, it's. I, I want to say it's it's a little film. It's not really a little film, but maybe because it's kind of set in one place. So it's basically um, a father and son um, autopsy team 
coroner's team, whatever, so, which is a bit weird. So <laughs> yeah. he's kind of teaching his son the, the ropes, like right. perhaps he was a farmer's boy or something, although I'm sure you have to get to university <laughs> or something. Anyway, um, they the, the cops bring in a body that you see being unearthed of a woman, and it's, uh, you know, it's quite, it's been there a long time. However, the body looks very fresh and um, to, to the point of peculiarity. And mm. as they start doing the autopsy, um, some very strange things start to happen, and they find some very disturbing things out about this person who may mm. or may not have lived in Salem. <gasps> That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, but um, it it kind of yeah, it's it's good. It's um, again because it's all kind of set in the one sense of claustrophobia, but also. Um, it, it's quite intense, really. So, yeah. Mm. How long that? is it? Not a normal length. Not long. Mm. An hour and a half. Cool. But, yeah, that was good. Um, it's still not... Love on the rocks. Ain't no surprise. Not here. So we will go straight on to the rocks. God, we're going to be finished in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I haven't got anything from the rocks, really. Um, so it's over to you. <laughs> yeah, I and I can't. Rem- I don't think. Stop me. So remind me if I used this last time. Tell me, the Matrix Resurrections. No, you didn't. Okay, so this is the fourth of the Matrix movies yes. uh, released in 2021. Yeah. Um, I I've watched it and it starts essentially with a remake of the start of the original Matrix Yeah, I'll s- I'll just to let you know, I'll see it, yeah. Ah, okay. So I was sat there thinking, this is pointless. Mm-hmm. It's You've just recast. And then you see the bit where, oh, no, these are people watching this. But I just watched the whole thing, and I thought, I just don't feel, I don't I don't see what it's doing. And I, it, it felt entirely unnecessary and like just a reason to make another film. No, and, I, and it's it's being a bit clever and a bit aware of itself as well with a lot of the relationships in it and a lot of the, you know, it 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 transpires that Neo is now back in the Matrix and he works for a game developer, and the the first three stories were his the game. I I don't know. I didn't I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I went into it with quite high hopes, really, only because um, obviously, like most people i really thought the first one was brilliant mm. and then um the, se- the second one was tolerable because you're always thinking it's going to pick up and more make sense for the third one which it didn't yeah. it just got slowly worse yeah. so after such a long time um you i was thinking well maybe they've really thought about this one and it's all going to be you know worth it but it was incredibly disappointing the whole thing was really yeah and it was like why do we have to have another one of these and it's exactly like, and yeah. at two hours, two and a half hours, it's like, mm. wh- why do we need these super long films? Yeah. Especially I, when mm. there's so much of it that you think you could just halve that whole scene could be halved, or mm. you know. And also, there were kind of there were bits where there was alluding to bits from I think the second and the third one, which I only ever watched once, probably mm-hmm. um, didn't really enjoy. And it was like talking about, oh, this is this character now, and blah blah blah. So I don't really care. Yeah. You know, it's they'd have been better off doing a sequel to the first one and pretending that the other two hadn't happened like they do sometimes in horror films or something like that. Yeah, and gone, yeah. Actually, the rest of it was all part of the Matrix, so we've deleted that, and now, you know, we're back here. But, you know, yeah, yeah so I agree. They, they, I mean, they brought Agent Smith back, but it's not the... Um, mm, it's not the same actor. the actor. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, uh, Hugo Weaving it wasn't him; it was somebody else, and it's like, oh, this is balls, rubbish. Yeah, and 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 as soon as you can say, well, anyone can be anyone, that kind of loses quite a lot of yeah, rabbit test, doesn't it? Really, it was mm. just yeah, the story. But again, I think you know, it's, we we know are being professionals. A story is key. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the, the the one upside is. Mm. Keanu Reeves, he's a dreamboat still. <laughs> he really is. I mean, he has got something about him that, because I've, I've always said he's not a very good actor personally, but he's very watchable and he's very, he's very, he usually chooses very well. I mean, 
I haven't seen the other John Wicks, but I've thoroughly enjoyed that first one. Yeah, they're great. I'm, I'm yet to watch the fourth one, but that's now. But I've heard good Prime. things. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I've heard good things about that as well. Yeah. So all good in I, the hunt. I think that'll be good. Well, okay. Well, we still haven't got Laurie. Um, Do you want another shit was... film to avoid? Oh um, yeah, I'll go on then. Um, Don't tell Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and there's no reason why in a million years you would watch this. Fast mm. Ten. The latest installment of the Fast and oh, the Furious. Gosh. They don't even bother saying Fast and the Furious anymore. Oh, okay. Christ. And I, I had extraordinarily low expectations of it. Can I ask, have you seen the other nine? I don't think I've... Oh, horribly, I might have. I, right, I okay. don't know for sure, but I definitely saw the last, the ninth. Okay, right. Um, Can I just... Which a... was the one where they let pay tribute to one of the actors who'd been Paul in it? Walker. Yeah, uh, is that I, nine or is that ages ago now? I can't remember. Right, okay. I don't know. Well, tell me about Fast 10. It's shit. <laughs> I mean, it is literally, it's this kind of family. Did you Have you seen any of them? No, I mean, to be honest, I'm not really into cars, which I believe yeah. it's about, hence the fast bit. Yeah. And as a very calm person with a bad temper, potentially, yeah. I don't yeah. want to be pushed along becoming want to be furious. furious. Yeah. yeah no, what, I'm, what's the premise? Do they have to get a car to somewhere, somewhere quick? So the, the premise of this one, it sort of picks up one of the, before Paul Walker died, they made one in where they did this heist in Rio and they stole a gangster's safe of money. Oh. Um, and then this one is that then they've just kind of escalated everything since then and they're more and more bad guys, worse and worse bad guys. Um and this is has got Jason Momoa in it and he plays the deranged son of the gangster they robbed and killed in the Rio heist film. Right. Okay, and who is Jason Momoa again? What's he been in? Right. He's Aquaman. Oh, right, okay. Oh, yeah, I can see him working in that. Um, but it's just, it's just so bad. It's so bad. The whole family. Yeah. Vin Diesel is, he's trying to emote in this film. And mm. he is, he is as wooden as Groot. Is James Statham in these films? Jason Statham. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Right, yeah. that's it. and he's still in them, is he? he like, is he, he's quite watchable. Well, yeah. I quite like either way. Well, right. he, he, Louisa really doesn't like Jason Statham, but Vin Diesel has elevated our appreciation of the state yeah. acting credentials. There's a charm. Yeah. I think there's a charm to James Statham. Is it James Statham? <laughs> I not. can't remember. You're confusing me now. It's Jason not. Statham. Yeah. There's a charm to his bad acting. A bit like uh, Arnie, maybe, you know. Yeah. Whereas, whereas uh, with Vin Diesel, there's just nothing there except cold black dead eyes. Yeah. Like in that film he did. Pitch black. Yeah. Yeah. Pitch black dead yeah. eyes. Well, I'm very pleased to announce that Laurie's now rejoined us. Hello, Laurie. Hello. Yay. Yeah. I fell in a puddle when I had too much mouths. I'm sorry. Oh, a no, bit late. Well, Were we talking do you action? The, do you mean the sea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many webs and window. concubines? The, the Brian, sure that, the Brian fish you out with his with his hook, his DVD hook. No, I haven't actually seen him for a while. <laughs> Where he's gone? Not but we good. were talking action. I take it we're on the rocks, right? That's where no, we are. Right yeah. Now. So why, have you got one from the rocks? And then we've got in the beam, so we could come back to that. I'll be very very quick. So my rocks is called the Last Voyage of the Dementor. Great idea. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, hold on, wait, wait, stop, stop. I just need to tell you, I'm halfway through this film. Okay. Are you loving it? I'm not hating it. Okay. <laughs> Weirdo. Um, okay. Well, Weirdo all right, go guy. on. Tell me why you don't like it, and I'll tell you. Well, I won't want to give anything away, but, um, yeah, so as we probably already know, this is the ship, the schooner, uh, that's taking Dracula from... Uh, to to England and that voyage that happened. So it's all set about you know that boat and that voyage. Brilliant idea. How can you go wrong? Ah, oh, they just went so wrong. That's not okay. Dracula. It's some sort of creature monster thing thing. And just the decisions that they make, the storytelling of it is so stupid. They obviously everyone's getting bumped off one by one, and they're like. What could it be? And maybe check the cargo. 
could possibly be yeah. what you're carrying right. on the boat. And then you get to like the 15th murder. I don't know what it could be, baby. And then someone, oh, it's just blank. So I'm, I'm up to that point, really. Um, and what I, I thought, yeah, brilliant idea. Um, te- and they've done it a couple of times recently. They did it with, um, what's this called? Who, um, who ate the bugs? Renfield. Wait, the, Renfield. Renfield. Right, so right, that, right. I haven't you know, seen that yet. I, well, I really enjoy Redfield. Very, very good. Very f- funny, obviously, with our friends who should I'm be... expecting it to be shit, but the cage thing being good. That's why Nicholas I'm Cage uh, guarantees a brilliant film, I think. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, is, he, 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 is he a movie lighthouse patron or whatever we call them? Mm. I don't think he's an honorary keeper yet. But should we elevate it? Well, no, I been. don't think you should go in before Nigel what? Neal. I think Nigel Neal. Never Nigel is... Neal. Who's Nigel what? Neal? Nigel Neal, he's the screenwriter. He's the writer, yeah. The woman in Black, Quartermass in the Pit. Well, I don't know if I support the strike. Halloween 3. Um, I don't want to get political. Need I go on further? Well, uh, yeah, but we. Uh, yeah, all right. But Nigel Neal, but also he's they, not but... female. No, you it's know? Nicolas Cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, We'll talk about that. Stop putting people time. in the fucking. All right, room. look, I can't. We haven't put anyone in there for about three years. No, yeah, it's fine. Um, is that a yes then from no. everyone? <laughs> is that a yes from Murray? <laughs> All right, okay, we'll move on. But I, mm. I, I, I thought the idea was good, and I thought, unfortunately, they had to make the boat like ten times bigger than it would have been in in real life. I don't know if anyone's been on those cargo vessels from the 18th century, but they're very small. Yeah, I remember them much smaller. <laughs> yeah, they are, they're tiny, but that's quite big. All right, then. I mean, so, some of the acting's quite good, some of the yeah. set pieces are quite good, but it's not Dracula. You've got such a great character there. I didn't mind. You use that character, that, but well, no, they just use a freaking special effect kick. But I think if you go from the book, Laurie, yeah. uh, when he's travelling over from Transylvania, yeah. um, he is quite um um animal like yeah back to back to his roots because he uh, and, like and, a special and, effect yeah, well he maybe <laughs> i don't know anyway mm. have you got something in the beam for us before we move on very very quickly children of men 2006 directed by alfonso Cruyon. alfonso is quite he's he's either lazy or he's just very picky or maybe he's just really rich and he doesn't really have to be a director he's done like some really good shit so obviously children of men you've got um, I'll, I'll go into that in a sec. But he also, he's done he, he did the best Harry Potter film, Prisoner of Azkaban. He's done Gravity, um, it, but he hasn't really done that much else. You know, he's done a, another couple of films. But anyway, 2006, he did Children of Men. It's got Clive Owen in it, set in 2027, and there's been 18 years of in, yeah, in infertility. There you go, not infidelity. Yeah. Infidelity, <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they, a, a woman becomes miraculously pregnant, and Owen needs to basically get her to safety. But it's just, it's just the way it's done, I suppose. Really, it's very kind of got that kind of British realistic kind of, but not quite realistic kind of feel to it. And just the premise of the, you know 2027. It's like a Terry Gilliam film, almost. It, it is a bit. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it. I found I got sucked into it. And there's something about Clive Owen, which I'm sure he's a dick. I'm sure of it. But I saw Croupier recently as well. I just there's something about I don't know. I, I don't know. I just I quite like him. He's got this what are you looking at? About him. What am I looking at? Yeah. I don't know. It's just I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe it's kind of that British institution. Is not that much of. Which I'll insert a bit here, if I remember. If I didn't remember. I like that. I was that Dubla. Is it Dubla? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's he's the one. coming um, on that guy. What's you know? it? No, he's. I think he's a guy. That, well, he is a guy who uh, was in Carter's sex, Unstoppable Woman's sex, sex Machine. Oh, yeah. How do you so, spell that? <laughs> <laughs> <It's difficult. laughs> All right. 
So here is our familiar noise of the trailer trawler falling past our tropical island. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to do alliteration if you were. Um, <laughs> I saw a film for you, Wyndham. Oh, yeah. I saw a trailer, trailer for you, so I'm going to oh, give right. you this recommendation for free. It's called The Beekeeper. Right. Okay. And it's yeah. about a man In a who, has a, who has a friend, a woman, who basically um, this company or this so-called company frauds her of everything she's got, you know, over one of these telephone things. But he's not a beekeeper. He also he keeps bees, but he also is like um, Bruce Willis in Die Hard. Um, so he goes. <laughs> he he basically goes and uh, gets. Dist- well, it looks like it destroys a whole organization. Is this the Statham? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember who it was, but yes, yeah, 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 that's why I thought you'd like it. No, because <laughs> no, I mean, it, it looks like a film like, um, per, what's it called, Perfect Day? One Day Out? Bruce Willis film. Die Christmas. Hard? That's it. That's about Die Hard. <laughs> day One Day Out? <laughs> it does it all in a day. It does it all in a day. <laughs> Jesus. I've only seen it once. I liked it very much, though, but I think... So that's my gift to you. With okay, thank you. I appreciate oh, that. what a gift. Yeah, Cinemas from January. Hard, that yeah, there you go. All right, so um, we are going to move on to our feature. Which oh, wait, what? You just get, like, this icon, the trawler. Yeah. Even though I'm my sorry, trawler... Sorry. My trawler like, went past about a month ago, so now it's already out in <laughs> cinemas and everything. What and is it, it was the creator. I thought creator looks quite good. Gareth Edwards' new film. Sci-fi... It's that. It's mm. that oh yes, and yeah, yeah, humans yeah, yeah, yeah. against AI. I really shit. like the look of that as well. I have, yeah, but, and there's a fear for me that they put all the good bits, which they always yeah. do, obviously in the trailer. Yeah. But um, I I wonder if there's a lot left from it because it looks very good, but I don't know if it's going to be as good. Be. As, yeah, mm. I don't know why I think that, but. It's not like the beekeeper. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a lot more from that film. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's been out a while fun. now. A good couple of weeks. Came out uh, 29th of September. So, I don't know. Okay. Um, but there was another actual actual. There's not a lot of buzz good. about it, is there? Like the beekeeper. No, not really. <laughs> Fucking <Did you>? up. <laughs> Sorry, I'll shut up now. Windy bub. Uh, I've just got a. We we're talking about the potential uh, honorary. Lighthouse keeper Nicholas Cage. Yes, we are. He's he's got at least three films coming out. Uh, yeah. So I just want to call three of them out. Butcher's Crossing. It's a western set back in um, Western when, times. Western times, but it, he's a buffalo hunter. Ah! In that, uh, he's also in a film called Dream Scenario, where his character starts showing up in everybody's yes. dreams. I saw that. That's one. a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Like, um, like and. Freaker. And he is uh, also in a film called The Retirement Plan, where he plays a retired hitman. Like the beekeeper. Kind right, of. the beekeeper. So, Can I say, for three films that are coming out quite soon, I imagine, together, mm. what a range. I mean, he has yeah. range. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, if you wanted to act, I mean, he's, he's definitely acting, isn't he? He's doing different parts. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I don't understand why there's such, such resentment about him going up on the wall. I think it took a while to kind of understand his gig, you know. It was just such a weird, bizarre phenomenon. And mm. now we're all kind of understanding now. It's like, shit, he's game for anything. He'd stretch and wiggle anywhere. I was thinking recently about, um, oh, Vampire's Kiss again. I don't yeah. know if oh, yeah. that film's ever popped up in your thoughts. Yeah, it has. Actually. But yeah. it's just... I need to own it. I need to go out and buy that again because that's just something. But anyway, I think that's I kind of the heart of what Cage's arm, uh, Cage's armism is. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, let's move I, on. I, I think I, we should certainly put him on the wheel of wonder, Nicholas Cage, if we haven't already. Yeah. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed everything I've seen except that film you just mentioned but I'm thinking of giving that a, a, re, a rewatch because I think I missed the entire point of it I thought you and I didn't like that did we? we and Laurie got very cross yeah he got really angry with us yeah, yeah. Yeah. As, as usual we, we're lucky we weren't talking about the Fast and the Furious yeah. we'll, have to, we'll have to listen to that on that. listen back Laurie 
Oh, God. All right, so coming up... move on to 1983 is that all right yes yes okay so um let me tell you a little bit about 1983 okay margaret thatcher wins a landslide victory in her the election special um broadcast on tv um and that was that was her second victory i think so um she's doing pretty well at the time um, it was um, not. It was only a few years away when she gave um, Jimmy Savile a knighthood. So well done, you. Very yeah. good. What a judge of character. Um, popular culture. The CD goes on sale in the UK. Oh wow! Yeah, the compact disc. And I remember. I think it was Wogan, but I certainly remember. Or it might have been Tomorrow's World, but um, where they were all Blue Peter. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. But one Scratching of those shows. It. Yeah, no, you couldn't. You Eating couldn't the dinner him. off it. You couldn't destroy him. You couldn't scratch him. That yeah, was you a crock of shit, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, scratch, you eat easily. your dinner off it. Yeah. Um, Policemen well, use it like bulletproof vests. It was the start of some classic um, television as well. Breakfast TV started. It hadn't been like breakfast TV before. Good morning, Britain, all that gag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Blackadder started in 1993. Blackadder won. Well, okay. So you had yeah. Peter Cook in there, didn't you? Yeah. Peter yeah. Cook was there. Mm. Amazing. Okay. And Blockbusters started with Bob uh, Holmes and the ever immortal, ever running joke of, Can I have a pee, please, Bob? Isn't that self back then? Amazing. Well, I don't think it was on the first episode, but it would have been a long one. Yeah. Well, um, music. Anyone care to name a, any of the. Artists that were big at the time, Van Gillis, Jean Michel Jean. <laughs> um, all right, let's try Every Breath You Take with the Police. That was a big hit. Ooh. Do you, do you, like that? you do prefer the, the rap version? But, um, yes, much yeah, prefer the rap version. Me too, me too. Well, like someone stepped on his foot. <laughs> <laughs> Billy G talking of someone stepping on someone's foot. Michael Jackson, that was a big hit. <laughs> Phenomenon. Uh, Flash Dance from um, uh, What a Feeling from Flash yep. Dance. It was a man. It's a man dancing. Look, they're not even hiding it. Men at Work, Down Under. Oh. Beat It, Michael Jackson, Total Eclipse of the Heart, Bonnie Tyler. And well, quite these, um, and that'll do. But uh, when sweet, oh, let's have you with me. Sweet Dreams are made of these. So mm. quite a lot of big songs there, I think. Yeah. Um, I clearly found one person who died, and that was Carrie Carpenter. Bless her. Bless her. Um, Immortalised Forever in um, Superstar, which is a wonderful film about right. Carrie Carpenter. Told, I've talked about this before, talked through. It's made and shown through the use of Barbie dolls. Oh, and, yeah, this yeah. is the... Um, you oh, can't get the... it. Because, yeah. Um, oh, it did remember. Velvet Goldmine. Oh, what's his name? I can't remember now. Anyway. Um yeah, um, and you can't get it. You can find, see it, find it on uh, YouTube and stuff, but it's very hard to. You can't get it because no the rights go. Todd Haynes, Todd Haynes. There you go. And top grossing films. All right, so let's have a look. Anyone want to guess what the top film was? Eighty-three. By Return far, of by the way. Return of the Jedi came out at eighty-two. Was it 82, Return yeah. of the Jedi? It's Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I've got here, Malice. Yeah, brilliant. Um, we also had Tutsi. Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, good film. Yeah. Flash Dance. Blue to that before. It was Trading, a ridiculous film. <laughs> Trading Places. Great good film. film. And War Games, which I've never seen. Have you not? Yeah. I have seen the I've seen the video box to that more times than you can possibly imagine. Because um <laughs> it was in this it was in the shop that I went to used to go and search for VHS tapes and stuff mm-hmm. all the time. And it always attracted my attention because one of the most sought after uh, Dot Two episode stories was the War Games. And ah. so I'd see it and then I'd be disappointed and annoyed by it. And then I wouldn't yeah. get it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The go. film actually in itself is a little bit disappointing and annoying, but we all got excited because obviously computers. What? Computers? <laughs> and it's kind of about computers. And you get like a home computer and all you have to do is like, 
end the world. Get a telephone yeah. or whatever, and you could basically get nuclear weapons and all that. And to be perfectly honest, you're much better watching Electric Dreams, which um, which is a film based on the uh, well, where the song comes from. Have you seen that? No. Nope. Okay, so think. Um, no. Weird, no. Th- think weird science, but without um, with more of an evil intention. And without the body, just a BBC a cool computer, mm. oh, and and that's it really. I'm is gonna it, get to you. It's a human PC rivalry over a woman. Yeah. yeah. How do you know, Win? Because I'm I know everything. <laughs> yeah, you're very clever. Human at, PC at rivalry over IMDb. a woman. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the ones that got away. Quick. So, to, to, all right. Okay. Hold on. You've slowed it down now by saying quick, haven't you? <laughs> so it's your own fault. All right, so it's two Stephen King uh, stories. Christine and the Dead Zone. Uh, Christine, I remember vividly. We talked about this because, um, again, it was one of those films I watched time and time again. I'd, I'd love to see it again. I think Me it too. stands the test of time. I think, Me too. Yeah, you know, it's set. It's so set very firmly in the 80s, but also in the 50s, I think, because of the car mm. and the um, the style and all that kind of stuff. So brilliant. And the dead zone, which I was never really overly enamoured with, to be honest. How about you guys? I've always um, liked it. I think the first time I ever saw it was with my dad, and I didn't expect anything. Never knew the story, nothing. And we just thoroughly enjoyed it. So it's got like a place in my heart. And you got Walken. Oh my God, mm. Christopher Walken talking. And uh, no, I haven't seen either of them. Oh, Windows. That's disappointing. Wow. Well, yeah. d- Dead Dead Zone's Cronenberg, David Cronenberg, so it yeah. gives you a flavour of the quality of what it's going to be. And then Christine, that's uh, John Carpenter. Oh, oh. Yeah. now isn't that funny? Because I really like John Carpenter's films. Right, let's move funny. on to. <laughs> Is that funny? It will be in a bit. That's funny. When I reveal <laughs> what I think about Videodrome. Ah. Ah, now I quite liked it. All right, so by David Cronenberg, written by David Cronenberg, produced by Claude Haru, starring <laughs> James Wood, Sonia Smith, Deborah Harry, not the, um, cinematography, words Mark Irwin, edited by Ronald Sanders, music by Howard Shaw, and it's 90 minutes long. It's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, right, the budget was. 5.952 million Canadian dollars, or dollars, let's say. And does anyone want to guess how much it made in the box office? 12 million. Yeah. No, 2 million, 2.1 million. Oh. So it was, <laughs> it was a, a loss, unfortunately. All right, um, so let's have a little clip. Why would anybody watch a scum show like Videodrome? Why did you watch it, Max? Business reasons. Sure. What about the other reasons? Max Wren is a victim. I woke up with a headache. He What's has that? been exposed to Videodrome. I've been hallucinating for a while, ever since... What? Since I first saw Videodrome. His brain is already receiving video images. I think that massive doses of Videodrome signal will ultimately produce and control hallucination. Boom. Well, all right. Okay. All right. So, who'd have thought VHSs could be quite so sinister? Or mm. Betamax, because they use Betamax, the Americans. All right. So, um, Wyndham, let's start with you. Um, when did you first see this film? And what do you think? What were your first impressions? I first saw this film when I watched it a few weeks ago. And it is pretty bonkers. <laughs> but you know that's yes. going to be because it's got James Woods in it. So yes. It's just as long as you're aligned with, uh, okay. It's almost like anything with Gary Busey in it. You go, fine. I know where I'm going. James mm. Woods, crackers. Um, it was, I, I had no idea what it was about. Didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't expect what it was. And I quite liked it. Ooh. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to go next because, Laurie, I think you're going to have quite a bit to talk about. Um, mm. Mm. Uh, Maybe. Well, okay. So I, I saw this um, when I was growing up. 
Um, so I can't remember exactly when. Um, I thought it was all right. Um, I thought it was a bit weird. Um, and rewatching it now, I thought it was still a bit weird. Liked it a lot. Really liked Debbie Harry's performance. Um, that girl could act, I thought. And yeah, so I was very pleased to, that we got to rewatch it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks. Sorry. Uh, similar to you, I think it was probably on TV quite a lot, wasn't it? Late Night BBC Two, something like that would be treated to it. Um, I always knew it was weird and odd, and I couldn't quite connect with it. I didn't quite know what it was up to, but obviously big scenes of, you know, arms going inside torsos and pulling out guns that morph into arms and just like crazy shit. TVs coming to life and oozing into flesh. What the fuck? So obviously, yeah, always knew it was good. And then when the DVD phenomena, you could eat your dinner off them back then, um, came out, I treated myself to it and then got much closer to the film, as it were, and just watched it loads of times since. Still completely love it. I understand what it's saying, uh, or it's kind of exploring, as it were. Um, and yeah, I think I just, I love it. I think it still stands up today because it is that really kind of, <laughs> yeah. It's well, just, I think it's, it's really does it, it, it a lot of the time. He does it many minutes. What, do, what were you going to say? With? Well, I was just going to say, I, I think it, you know, if you'd, I hadn't, didn't watch it when I was younger, but if you look at, you know, there are some lines in there from old Professor Oblivion. Saying, <laughs> That's the name in it. From yeah. Brian saying, Oblivion. soon all of us will have special names. And if you think of kind of like social media and everybody yeah. gets tags on social media, we're, we're different on line than we are. But this was, 1982-83, which is yep. 40 years ago. Ah, Prescient guy, that guy. Um, uh, There's an irony a little bit, Laurie, of you watching it properly on DVD. Um, because, yes! Isn't because... there now just now, then? <laughs> well, yeah, because it kind of it is something that is uh, kind of of its time as well, and kind of almost looking towards a bright future, which is kind of bright a different future. Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a dark future, I guess. Yeah, um, I mean, because that where well, you said it, it didn't do well at the uh, cinema. No, it didn't. But this was right at the height of you know video nasty VHS phenomena, and I think this was one of the big players that kind of started pushing out uh, Betamax because uh, I think it was I think actually Scanners, uh, the film that he did just before this one, David Cronenberg, that was a big one that was a win for VHS because it depended. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, because I was, scanners was sorry, go on. Yeah, it's depending on how many like versions you could get out on either VHS or Betamax, quick also, as possible. Also, the V I can clearly see the VHS cover off scanners. I mean, it was one of those covers that it was the man with his hands like down by his side, straight fingers yeah, straight, that's and it. his head yeah. about to explode, and it's like that's oh my it. God. Yeah. Um, so that was huge in the, I... in the old VHS world, and this was his first. Cronenberg's first kind of like major studio film. He actually had a budget budget for the first time kind of thing. So he came up with Videodrome, which is all about. I've got okay. a couple of questions. One, One, let's start with. Well, let's start with um, the fact that you said you kind of got it. I think I got it to a, a point, um, yeah. and I think it was, and then it kind of started unraveling for me. Really, wasn't mm. sure if how he was being controlled and what he was being controlled and what was going on. I knew that the signal gave someone tumours. I was up to it till that point. Yeah. And then it was like, I have no real idea what's happening now. And was it real or was it all a hallucination? Or, or recorded? Or recorded. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I to... think it's real. I think the narrative reality and I, th I think, yeah, just, just go with it, seeing it as a, a reality. But there is the element of unreality because you know the frequency of videodrome is essentially encouraging this tumor in your brain and essentially that's an evolution of man because now we have i can't remember what the line no, hold is on a minute. i understand I, I was listening so I, that's yeah. exactly what they said i've got that bit but i didn't get where it went from there about how he was what it was being how he was being controlled obviously through the videotape i mean I mean, that's where it started to unravel for me, and I don't, I don't think it's clear. Yeah, because it takes a, it takes a, a sort of a twist, doesn't it? Because you think 
first of all, oh shit, it's been so long since I've watched it. I need to get back to my notes and get my head back in the game. Um, but yeah, oh. Carry All right, on well, talking amongst yourselves. Well, uh, and the, well, the other thing I was going to say is I, I just find David Cronenberg's got a kind of sterile sort of filmmaking technique. and It just leaves me a bit cold. I don't feel like any kind of any connection with the characters or any warmth coming off of them at all. I don't in know in why. any of his work. But, yeah, I remember it when specifically. I, first, well, when I remember years ago, I think the first one I probably saw was Scanners, and I've had exactly the same kind of feeling. You didn't. It doesn't. They don't. It doesn't give you anything that you that helps you bond. I think with the characters. For example, mm. I feel very akin to the lad from Critters because he had um he and he was a young farmer's son. He was cool and and had a get a blaster in his his bedroom <laughs> like me. So I felt <laughs> that we were virtually cut from the same cloth. Well, you, you, can't, you can't you can't find a line to a a, a yeah. smart peddler. Like by James Wood. <laughs> no, I guess not. Hopefully, uh, anyone feel the same or different or what? I totally recognise what you're saying. Um, yeah, there's you never you, you, it, when this one. I mean, to be honest, you know, um, what's it called? Dead Zone that we were talking about a moment ago. That's much warmer. You know, you do kind of sympathise with Walken's character and stuff like that. And that's Cronenberg. That's not really a typical Cronenberg. This, however, is. And it is quite alienating. There's no one you really like or warm with, and a distinct lack of ghetto blasters for sure. Um, and he didn't. Um, he didn't write Dead Zone. It's an adaptation of the Stephen King story, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, Whereas yeah his, absolutely. The stuff he does. This is... right. Yeah. He's his cold, cold heart shines through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like kind of, right. Yeah. So I think. I could potentially give it a stab to give us a little walkthrough of what happened, if you want. Because you you are right, it does take some weird kind of tangents, like really what's going on here. But effectively, you've got James Woods, he's um, uh, a TV... Max Wren. Yeah, he's he's a, like a promoter, isn't he? He's like a program manager, um, uh, a cable programmer. So he chooses what films go on his channel. I've got the name of the channel now. Channel um, 83. Channel 83. That's it. And basically it just shows like violence, hardcore stuff, bit of soft pornography, that kind of thing. And he's looking for the next big thing. Um, and then he pops into his mate's kind of like work studio. He you know, has like lots of frequency transmitters and stuff. And he shows him this, this, uh, transmission that's coming out of um i can't remember where he says it's indonesia like indonesia or somewhere isn't indonesia it? somewhere really really far away but it's really weird crazy shit and this is called videodrome basically it's just like this play room and for what you can see on the fuzzy screen people are being tortured and murdered Hold on, like, stop stop you tricked me because yeah, we forgot that you were going to do the synopsis for us, and now you're doing it, but you're taking your time to do it. So you've got another. No, okay, I, I will really, really speed up. Yeah, it's not really a synopsis though here. But anyway, so so what? It transpires that now he's watched that the frequency <laughs> is going through. It always to transpires him. with your synopsis. Transpires. <laughs> yeah, it's really one of the words I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, this frequency starts to change him, so we're seeing hallucinations. Uh, 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 what hallucinations? There you go. Just Always explain the end. We know what happens. All it was the way a up. big setup. Basically, that guy deliberately exposed him to video drone, so they will slowly start taking over his channel and screwing everyone up in the whole world as they watch Channel Eighty Three, and they become and brains. These tumors will get bigger and bigger, and everyone will go. And video drone will take over. All right, do you believe? However. However, we haven't got time, Laurie. We, we've got about five minutes. Left there the was show. the daughter of Dr. Oblivion gives him a special tape and he becomes the flesh of, of Videodrome. So this tumour is now no longer just a tumour. His body is becoming the new evolution, the new flesh through videotape, through TV in this new frequency. And he is there to bring it all down. This is wrong. Oh. We should not be doing this. And then that's pretty much about it. Right. So you didn't explain any anything of use. We all understood that bit. All of that was of use. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
let's talk quickly about performances, but I mean quickly. Um, I, 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 James Woods is very good, but I want to point out three of the three, three um, of the ladies. I thought Debbie Harry was very good in her minor role. Um, she was quite vacant, but yeah, she was good. I liked her. I liked her. Um, I thought she was uh, she fitted the part. I also really liked Brian Oblivious, Oblivion's daughter. Thought yeah, she she's good. She's quite warm. Committed. One of the warmest Sonia characters Smith in there. Is yeah, the actress. and also there was an extra towards the end, a lady who was trying on glasses, who was really going for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really going for yeah. it. I mean. Uh, acting as much as you can without actually delivering a line, I thought. I thought, good on you. Well done. Yeah. You. Wanted so, to yeah. snatch her five minutes. Um, anyone else want to talk performances or effects briefly, maybe? I quite like the effects. It put me oh, in mind sure. of um, Fly. Mm. Well, yeah, I'm like again, isn't it? changing and, and all that kind of stuff. I think it's... I, um, I thought and, the and lips the... were good on the TV. Yeah. And the bit at the end... Uh, where the uh, the guy who's trying to take over the station and, and disseminate Kovex. him, when he dies, there's a very total recall style yes. death. He could, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, beautiful. That's, that's, beautiful. That's, that's my bag. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. The effects are very sweaty and icky and stinky. Yeah. And James Woods is very sweaty and icky yeah. and stinky. <laughs> yeah. and it's, you know it's like it's that kind of film it's great it's definitely of its time and it's talking about you know everyone was really worried about vhs converting people's brains and turning them into psycho killers and all that kind of stuff that's exactly what this film is kind of exploring you know how far does it go but then well look at the screen social media best, and, didn't, they? didn't they oh did they good on them yeah, well, they did, didn't they? They said that um, video nasties or horrors don't make killers. They just make killers more creative or something like that. Ah. That's reassuring. Anyway, right, <laughs> we've got to wrap up. We've got to move on. So memorable lines. I've got it bites. That's what you said. What kind of teeth do you think it has? Nice. Hmm. Anyone else? I don't, I've got another one, obviously. Long live the new flesh. Long live the new flesh, yeah. No. Yeah. All right then. Let's move on then. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> move on then. <laughs> all right. Performances. With them. Uh, having said all of that, five. Okay, Laurie. Eight. Eight from me. Um, effects. Well, Laurie. Uh, so unique. Oh, going eight. 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 Okay. Plot. Um, it gets five from me. It gets a four from me. Is he going to get a nine from me? Oh, mm. bad choice. Uh, when uh, we watch that, uh, Wyndham? Three. Laurie? Nine. Five. Direction, Laurie? Eight. Eight. Wyndham? Mm, five. Cinematography, eight from me, Wyndham? Six. Eight. We are scoring very similarly today, Mr. Wise. Yes. We are, uh, me, my lad. Sound of music. Uh, Wyndham. Six. Sorry. Oh, I do love it. I'll go seven, though. I'll go seven. Uh, seven. Um, originality. Laurie. Uh, we're going to go eight. Sorry. Yeah, eight for me. Uh, nine for me. Uh, enjoyability. Uh, I give it a five. I give it a five. I'll give it a seven. Okay, and life changing past or present, Wyndham, zero. It's a zero from me. <laughs> uh, two for me, Lloyd. Seven. So that like, gives it 64 from me. 51 from me. Uh, Lloyd, whenever you're ready. 50, 74, 71, uh, 79. 79. All right, which gives it a what? Nine. Gives it a movie lighthouse rating of 64.6 recurring. 64.6. All right, so um, let's have a look. On this year's leaderboard, 64.6, it puts it in fourth place, um, just below Wool Story. And above close encounters of the third kind, and on our big leaderboard, 
64.6. Oh, it joins a couple of others. It is um, um, in 60th place with Donny Darko and the Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that seems all right. Just about Crash. Another have, we, have we watched Nightmare on Elm Street 2? We have indeed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, yes. Oh, Look, I listen to him. Yeah, I think it's one of the bestest, bestest. Yeah, yeah. it's a good episode. Pity you weren't, don't remember it. No, you well. go back and listen to it. I it's all about the listen. fear of AIDS. Hellfire storms are coming. An electric storm to clean your streets and wash away your troubles. For every heart, there exists a wish. You ever play the numbers, Mr. Holloway? Me? Uh, never take risks. For every soul, there burns a desire. Oh, you don't. Always was. It smells to me like we're going to have visitors. <laughs> But never whisper your dreams, for someone might be listening. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Right, so um, let's move on straight on to our second film, which is Disney's Something Wicked This Way Comes. Let's Mm. have a look. S. Right, so it's directed by Jack Clayton. Um, screenplay Ray Bradbury, based on uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury, starring Jason Roberts, Jonathan Price, Dan Ladd, Pam Greer. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Music by James Horner. Um, 95 minutes running time. The budget was 20 million. Anyone want to guess how much it made in the box 20 office? 20 million? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> five. Five you million. You say five, Wyndham? Uh, well, I've just looked, I've seen, so it would be unfair. About 8.4 billion? It, it didn't make its money back. <laughs> no, 8.4. 18 million? Who they yeah. paying Yeah, that? it was all on that that, that, that mist that you see uh, on the yeah, front yeah. of Fright Night. You know that beautiful yeah. mist on the front of Fright Night? Yeah. Get it and, in and here, the, son. Well, we'll get... Backwards roundabout. We'll, get, oh, we'll yeah. get on to we'll get on to that in a minute. I mean, all right, so um, I'd never seen this before. I'd never heard of it before, to be honest. Um, and, you know, I thought I'd known about most Disney films, really. I mean, there was a very bleak period, I think, for Disney, uh, up until The Little Mermaid, which I think shot it back up towards the top, I think. I think that did very well. But all those early 80s Disney films, because I was looking, thinking, where does it fit between other Disney? And, like, it's got, I think you've got Herbie Goes Bananas or something. Right, right, <laughs> and, right. Uh, and some other little known films. And I was thinking, I, I wow. think I, um, you know, and I thought... Uh, Isn't that crazy? The wage. Here we go. Here we go. So yeah, we got Herbie Lake, Ghost Bananas, The Last Flight of Noah's Ark, Popeye, Midnight Madness, The Watcher in the Woods, Fox and the Hound, Condor Man, The Devil and Max Devlin, Man. Amy, Dragon Slayer, Tron, Night Crossing, Tex, Never Cry oh. Wolf, One Magic Christmas, The Journey of Nothing, Sitting Blind, Go on, so on, so on, until it gets to it. So weird. Well, I mean, you got mm. Tron in there. You have got you know mm. Fox and the Hound. A couple, but nothing. Nothing that really, you know, it's a very it's like a series of hits, hits, is it? And I yeah. think this is kind of endemic of that, really, because I'm not sure it knows what it wants to be, because it's not it doesn't have the charm. It doesn't have enough, in my opinion, it doesn't have enough charm to be a classic kids movie like The Goonies. Um, I don't know. See, and it's got I, too I... much. Hold on, and then I'll let you lot talk. And then, it, but then it's got too much horror to be for kids as well it's it's you know it's i think it's just too far past scary to be you know i think some of the tales in it like the woman going blind because she's beautiful wants to be beautiful mm. it's quite that is quite disturbed really and not something for children <laughs> but but you you have to in early 80s children were considered more robust than they are nowadays yeah okay yeah I got a sneak peek. Were we? Because we were all different. Yeah, we're fucked up. <laughs> yeah, we're the ones all yeah. fucked up. Doing a podcast think, in our think, 40s about horror films. I think 80s. I probably would have quite liked this film. I probably, if I had it on VHS, I would have watched it a good couple of times at least. Yeah. yeah I think I would have liked it. Um, what about you, Wim? Have you mm. seen it? Has any, uh, have you seen it before? No. No. Okay. No. And to be fair, I think we kind of 
can say we still really haven't because you cannot <laughs> get this anywhere. So yeah. the only version I've I got it. Was... Oh, have you? Yeah. Why Check did you ask me out. for it? Where did you get it from? Doesn't matter, but I've got it. It wasn't Alan. <laughs> Tell me it's not him. <laughs> Brian. Tell Who's me. Alan? We sacked Alan. Oh, yeah, no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't know. This sound wrong completely. <laughs> There's there some weird, weird um, you know, um, innuendo stuff going on with the two of them, so we had to split them up. So Alan no longer works for us, unfortunately. Just grind on oh, his head in the department. Oh, it's all hearsay. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, I've got a perfectly good copy. I'll send it to you if you want. God damn it. No, yeah, so well, the... anyway, yeah, so we just watched it on a yeah, shonky popular... YouTube yeah, 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 yeah. ripoff. So shonky. Which made it very difficult to really see what was going on really engage but you yeah. got the proper gist and yeah. again you know 1983 you know we probably watched vhs copies way worse than this yeah uh, and the memory is still vivid and clear so to be honest actually well that's know, prestige did pretty we did pretty much see it all right can i ask yeah. you what you felt about the setting all right because i don't tend to do this anymore but you know that the oldie worldy like you know, tales of Huckleberry Finnish. Yeah. yeah. Of way back when everything was great and you could go and get a gobstopper from the store and yeah, get yeah. a slap round the head from the barber and sit in a drain, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, do we like that? And the narration? Yeah. Yeah, we... yeah, yeah. Yeah, very Americana, <laughs> free come bullshit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I loved all that. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And kids running and getting it's, into scampy so... trouble. Because it's one of the kids who's narrating it, isn't it? Yeah. But much later in life. Mm. Um, yeah, I, did, yeah. I didn't mind. If, I think it fit this story. And it is yeah. very much that era of, of Disney where it's quite pristine and this. But I, I guess that's part of it, right? There's this. It's projecting this idea of what appears to be a perfect little town. Everybody in it has their own vanities and desires and fears and. He would Those keep are the things. a lot better in Needful Things, I think. He did, yeah. Um, but that is Stephen King, right? He's yeah, well, well, then you know, I was going to say, Stand By Me, you get just the same thing in Stand By Me, that kind of voiceover. Um, I've got a question. Yeah. Horror films for kids can be problematic. Hmm. Can you name any other ones? Other ones that are horror films for kids? Do you want me to repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> no, go on, yeah. Horror, horror films for kids. I mean, you know, like The Haunted Mansion or Casper. It, I don't know if that's supposed to be a horror film, really, for kids. But, you know, what films do you think? Do you, can you think of any? I can't think of any that really work for kids. De deliberately angled for kids that... Uh, well... Uh, hmm. you've got, obviously, you've got, like, Monster Squad. You've got, like, Buffy. Um... Well, I wouldn't oh. even say Buffy's aimed at kids, is it? Oh, okay. Well, right now, I think the first one originally was well, teenagers. You know, moving into that teenager yeah, but all, kind of space. Nearly all horror films are aimed at teenagers. Monster Squad, then that, that yeah, was for kids. It's yeah. stuff like Goosebumps. Yeah. You know? yeah, 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 have exactly. you seen Have you seen Goosebumps? I've read. Yeah, I've read, I've read some of the books. So they got. Uh, does that work then? I just think it's you know it's uh, kind of hard to pitch it. I guess. They're and I, yeah. The witches. There you go. Yeah, that yeah. Perfect. There's your example. Well done, yeah. you win, Laurie. Well done. Thanks. Uh, I like the term. This uh, the the establishment shot of the town. It reminded me of Gremlins for some reason. You know, when you get to Kingston yes. Falls and it's all yeah, yeah. Yes. it's all there right in front of you. It's you know? very much that town. But like yeah. you say, when everyone, it's all pretty pretty much perfect. But they've got their own vanities, their own dreams, their own desires. And lo and behold, here comes the carnival into town. And Front. yeah. Well, I can't help thinking of a couple of things, but one, can I just ask, did they all get saved at the end? Or are they all, do they all go off? Are they all dead? You know, does she get her, does she become old and get a side pack? Is my question. Or what happened? The shonky version I that I watched, I don't think they did. No. I don't we saw did. them all at the end, but I don't think they did. Um and um, maybe it, that whole carnival thing, I'm, I'm sure this is an influence for League of Gentlemen, 
and um, you know, yeah. the carnival coming and that's all the desires. Yeah, such a great idea. I was actually out with Durant and Rave, the South Western Winkle Pickler. We were at uh, a fair. We went to a fair together, and then he said something wicked this way comes. I was like, what the fuck's that? I've never heard of that. He goes, I think it's a film. It's a book as well. Where like a carnival turns up in town and they kind of steal souls and stuff like that. So that's a brilliant idea. Why haven't I seen that film? And why don't we see that that film or that idea even more? I know, obviously, like you say, League of Gentlemen have done it. But, you know, like Funhouse. I, yeah, I think that's a Tobe Hooper film, actually. I but do that think... doesn't live up to what it could be. I just want a really, really good carnival fair kind of horror horror film and this doesn't quite do it mm. um but it's such a it, you know such a simple idea you could have a great horror film in that setting but i can't think of i don't think there is one out there maybe there is but i don't know but write in and tell us yeah i, I mean you've got clowns they're pretty current yeah killer clowns again that's a bit shite uh, i like killer clowns did, did we not say we liked that before nah. <laughs> The fact that they're not really clowns, that's how the aliens look in real life. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, um, I think we need to wrap this up. Um, just on the effects, I just wanted to say, I thought the age of the effect for 1983 was very convincing. Well done. Hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. T- you two couldn't see it, probably, on your shop. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. All right, shall we well, see? I do wonder, I, how, yeah. how old, I've got a question. How old do you think the narrator is? Oh, 40. Because he says at one point when it's establishing the town and they're running past the barber mm. and all that, he says, oh, I have my hair cut in there a thousand times. And for whatever <laughs> reason, I sat there thinking, well, how old would you have to be? So I actually, this is very sad. I sat down and worked out that That's even sweet. if you had, if you had a haircut <laughs> every out. four weeks, you'd be 83 before you had a thousand haircuts. Yeah. But if, if more normally <laughs> it was every six weeks, Yes. You'd be 124. Yes, yeah. I reckon it's about 124. See, I, I, worked it, I worked it out, out if I had it every three months, which is what I usually <laughs> yeah. try and do. You know, and that's an awfully long time. That like, is a very long time, yeah. I didn't get any uh, special lines, really. It was no. look, it was okay. Other, um, performance-wise, I thought the kids were actually all right. They're not irritating. I didn't like the kids. No. No. Really. Oh, I, thought the, I thought the kids were okay. Obviously, we had Cheyenne in there again, Jason Roberts. Yeah. Did, a lot Robots. of his acting cons- consists of... Oh, that's about <laughs> it. Oh, what about a lot of that. Price? Did you like Jonathan him? Price, he's good. He's good. He's actually... Well, I, I really yeah, like the he has the two pictures young. on the hands. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, his yeah, voice... He's somebody, yeah. yeah. I think I would have really liked this film, actually, if I saw it when I was little, but I just didn't know anything about it. Do you know what? I think um, I would have liked it as well, probably. It certainly would um, certainly fill the spot, that's for sure. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, just a little fact. The, obviously, Jack Clayton, he's oh, yeah. the director who did The Innocence, an absolute mm. masterpiece. And if I could, if we do a Christmas episode, I would love it if we could watch The Innocence. Uh, and have a look at that film. But well, yeah, I'll tell you that what, is a masterpiece. I'll tell but you what, maybe the, you could choose. Maybe you could choose it for one of your Halloween specials. Well, no, we're going to come to that. We'll be very quick as well. We'll it would have been easy, it. wouldn't it? When... It would have been. <laughs> um, but yes, so his actual intended version of this, there's only one in existence on VHS in the Center for Ray Bradbury Studies in Indianapolis one VHS copy of Jack Clayton's original cut of this film. Wow. That's not what we've seen, by the way. Well, mm. I think I might have seen that one. Sorry. Oh, really? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I need your version. Deleted it now, because we've watched the film. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, shall we score it then? Um, yeah. And this pop stand. All right, so performances, I'll give it a seven. Wyndham. Five. Yeah, six. Effects, Wyndham. Uh, six. Six. Laurie. Seven. Um, plot, Laurie. Uh, love the idea. Carnival coming to town, that's what I want to see. Uh, seven. Seven, Wyndham. Seven. Uh, rewatch factor, one. One. I want to watch it again. 
Um, six. Okay, direction, wouldn't it? Six. Glory. Six. Five. Um, cinematography, Laurie. Uh, six. Four. Four. Uh, sound and music, five. Six. Oh yeah, music was pretty pretty shit actually. Um, four. Okay, originality, uh, wooden. Five. 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 Ooh. Um, enjoyability, um, Laurie. Six. Six from me. Uh, five from me. And life changing, past or present, I give it a zero. I give it a zero. Um, one. Wow. Because of my, okay. yeah. Interesting. We, we kind of scored something this month. Uh, right, I give it a 47. I give it a 45. Sixteen, twenty-eight, forty-one, fifty-three. Fifty-three, pretty close. All right. So, what does that give us, Wyndham? Gives us a movie lighthouse rating of forty-eight point three recurring. Forty-eight point <clears> three. <throat> uh, okay, so that is quite low down. It's uh, number eight now, and that's below the grey, but above Lady Snowblood two. <laughs> <laughs> Wait to tell that was 48.3 on our big leaderboard puts it ooh, puts it in a hundredth place. Woo! That's, that's, that's All good. right. Just below Eden Lake, but above Straight Jacket. I forgot what Straight Jacket was, but I remember that. Straight so Jacket, that was. Uh, yeah. Um... What's the name? Oh, what's her name? Yeah, yeah Joan Byers. Joan Byers. Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford, yeah. Fantastic <laughs> piece of work. Yeah, well, I've got a lot of affection for that film. All right, yeah. so um, we are going to wrap things up. Now, we're not going to be spinning the Wheel of Wonder this week, are we? Sorry, is that right? Well, that's right, James. Because <laughs> what could the next episode be? Could it possibly be our Halloween spectacular? And... Ooh. What have I rustled together? Absolutely nothing. So probably about three minutes before this call, I thought, oh, what, what could be quite good for us to watch? So I've scribbled down some uh, things. So quickly from you guys, what at Halloween, what would you prefer to watch? Are you going to give us a choice and then we choose what we'd like each, one each? Yeah, okay, right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> Colour of Out of Space. Oh no, colour Colour from of spe space. Is it not colour from space? Nick Cage, yeah. melty welty, very strange, a little bit I've sort seen of it. Lovecraft in there. You've seen yeah. it already. Next I've seen one. it twice. This comes I've as a them. double package though. We have to do both. Demons, Demons Two. Actually, no. We could do either or. We're doing Demons Two. Don't worry about it, Winnie. If you haven't seen Demons, you can pick up where it picks up. Don't worry. Demons Two. Right, that's an 80s classic. Yeah, I've seen um, it. Yeah, I know that very well. And then... I don't anything think... original? You what? Uh, anything original? I've seen all these films. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Doesn't Something you cool. haven't seen. No, I'm kidding. Come on, are you? Extro. You haven't seen that. It's a weird British oh, kind of horror -y alien thing. X-T-R-O. Oh, or, Chris or Christine. Okay. Wendell, do you want to pick first? Hmm. Uh, I will... Oh, I've, I've just seen the, the poster for Extro. I'm going to pick Extro. Great. <laughs> All right. And I, I am definitely going to... Right. I want to watch The Demons, which is set in the cinema. That's the so... first one. Is that that's Demons? One. Yeah, so yeah, definitely Demons. Demons. Um, that is one of the films that really fucked me up when I was young. Really Excellent. haunted <laughs> the hell out of me.